provided you enable everything in there. It doesn't have to be quite as tight on the, the, the patentees. Um, the, uh, the, the patent office doesn't even uh, look at it, other than it goes in, they'll put a filing date on it, give it a, give it a number, give it a date. Um, if you don't do anything with it for a year, they just uh, throw it out without even looking at it. And uh, so, why exactly do I want this? It's only good for a year. Patent office doesn't look at it. Don't necessarily have any claims in it. Although I would recommend you put at least an A claim in a provisional, but you don't have to. Um, why would I want to do it? Well, the reason you want to do it is it can act as a placeholder within the U.S. patent system for you. Um, these others are. The utility and plant patent are good for 20 years from the date that you file. Well, they can claim priority back to this provisional application that you submit. And uh, they're good for 20 years from the date that, that they were filed. But they can claim priority back that one additional year. So essentially, they can buy you an additional year. They, 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 and they, uh, they, they, they can buy you some time. They're a little bit cheaper to, to, to get done. The patent office will charge you a little bit less for it. Um, an attorney or an agent, your fees would most likely be less than they would be for a non-provisional because they don't have to have the claims in there as rigorously. Um, so you can get that out there into the public a little sooner. You know, find out if there's any way that you can uh, monetize your invention. If you don't think you can, um, you, know, you can uh, you can just let it let it drop and it doesn't uh, go anywhere. Um, as a matter of fact, the uh, patent office, unless you file a non-provisional claims priority backed off of it, that provisional application will never publish from the, the patent office, so it doesn't create prior art against you either. Until, until you actually go to go go, go to use it. Is there a big difference between filing fees between the patents? Uh, yes. Um, a uh, quantity, the uh, filing fees for a utility patent application are going to be about six hundred dollars. Um, the filing fee for a provisional application is going to be. For a small entity, it's going to be about $125. And then on top of that, if you're having an attorney or an agent help you, the fees, fees associated with that would be on top of that. Yes, Larry? Uh, I'm just a little unclear on, I'm not entirely sure if you just haven't gotten to this yet, but are these renewable or is it 20 years and that's it? Um, we didn't get to it. No, it's 20 years and, and that's it. However, if you end up doing an advancement beyond what you had in that initial application, you can get a patent on that improvement. So something else could get a, a, a patent that would end up that could that could end up going on further, but that uh, that initial patent, assuming everything processes through the system on time, you're gonna get basically 20 years from the, the date that it was filed. Yes. 
So you can get a patent on an improvement on a new patent, but can somebody else get a, a, a patent on the improvement? Or you pretty much said no, right? Yeah, somebody else. Yeah, sure. There's oh, know, okay, the, the, right. the, 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 the key car remote controls out there. And okay. Actually, there's probably a whole series of patents that relate to, to that, but just for simplicity's okay. sake. You know, that, that, that one's out there, and then somebody else came along with, well, now we've got a keyless one. It's an improvement over, over the other. Okay. And because it's an improvement, whoever had that initial patent without, the, uh, without authorization from the, the keyless um, patent holder, they wouldn't be able to make a keyless entry, even though they could end up reading the patent application, you know, re re reading the, 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 the issue patent, and know how to make and how to use this one. I think the same person files improvement. He has run from keyless, the same company that Um they're they're yeah, pro, 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 provided it's something like separate from what that was, you get 20 years on top of that. If if it's basically considered the same sort of thing, you get into a little bit of a greater area, but if, if it's determined that that's basically part of what the original one was, or too significantly like that, you could get a patent on the, the, the new subspecies. If, it, if it's just considered a small change with, 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 within the overall uh, grouping, then you could get a patent on that, that particular one, but you end up having to uh, disclaim the, the end of the patent term, so you'd still have the original 20 years. Um, that gets a little gray, depends on what exactly the, the thing is. But a, a, a true improvement beyond what, what was there in, in the original, that would be able to get your, your 20 years on the, on the next. Yes, please. If you have a patent, and it runs for 20 years, and you make the mousetrap, and then you improve that mousetrap, so that you have the new one that you're making for another 20 years. Can somebody come in and now make the old one? So as, else? As, as soon as that first patent expires, and it can either expire the 20 years, or we'll talk about later on maintenance fees, where if you don't yeah. keep your thing active, you can abandon it and it might go, go public sooner. But yeah, that, that, that original one, now that, be, that enters the public domain after 20 years, but the nice thing is, you've now got the better mouse trap that you've got a patent on. Other people are making your less advanced one, but you're, you, 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 you've got the new one, the better one. No, it was actually a similar question. When you extend that to drug manufacturers, uh -huh. there seems to be a lot of, uh, I'm just thinking of a generic Lipitor, which you can now get, but Lipitor, tried to do an improvement to keep you from being able to get the generic. What was that about and is that different? Okay. Um, the, 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 the drugs, I don't tend to get involved uh, too much in, in uh, pharmaceuticals, but my understanding is that a lot of times what they'll end up doing um, to kind of get the patent protection on the original drug is that um, they end up getting a patent on different metabolites or something that comes as a result of using that drug. Again, I'm, I'm not, that's, that's not my area of expertise. That's, <coughs> but that, that's my understanding. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I had a question about um, the, the penalties for claiming um, patent pending or patent uh, when, you don't, when you don't have it. Here's, here's what I, I, I came into a case where somebody filed a provisional and they were making something and they stamped it patent pending. They then went, <coughs> did not make a real patent. So after a year, they didn't have that, but they were still selling the material. It said patent pending because of course they're manufacturing. Are there, are there penalties for claiming uh, patent pending when you shouldn't? Um, there are actually, and actually that's uh, on, I've co covered on uh, one of my slides a little later on, if you don't mind, if I'll hold off on Give me the answer to that. Uh, what category does pharmaceutical come under? Um, pharmaceutical would end up falling under uh, utility 
patent coverage. Um, typically, um, you know, if it's like an aloe type, it, it, I guess it, it could fall under a uh, plant as well, but typically, like the drugs themselves, they, 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 they would be considered under a utility patent. Yes, Mike? I just want to make a comment about pharmaceutical. What they usually do is to go to Congress, and they argue that they spend so much money developing that, so they have a special case to extend their patent. They've been doing that. Thank you. Um, those um, so, so, software patents are a kind of unique beast. They do fall under utility. They tend to uh, be considered a, a business process, a business method uh, quite often. And um, some software is patentable. It, 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 it depends on what exactly it is, and you have to make sure that you have it meeting um, in a proper way. Yes? Really quick, is the provisional patent uh, extendable? Can you bring it back? A provisional patent, that's an excellent question. A provisional patent is not extendable, but you can submit a, 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 a separate provision. Yeah. Um, the original one doesn't get reviewed. You know, you can put whatever you think is current of your uh, your invention at the time. Put that in a provisional application. You can uh, you can have multiple provisionals in at a time, and a uh, a non-provisional application can actually claim priority to, to multiple provisionals. So, if your first provisional expired, you know you can you know, update what you had as provisional and can submit a submit a new one, and you could have that pending while while that provisional is is filed. Um, and patent pending is just a, 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 all it means uh, is that you have an application on file that is in process. It can be a a provisional application. It can be a utility application. Um, if you have a patent application on file with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, but do not have an issued patent yet, you can say that you are patent pending. Um, who can obtain a patent? And the language on this has changed slightly under the, the, the new act, but basically, an inventor is assigned as eligible to receive a patent for the invention. All inventors must be included, and uh, it seems kind of obvious, but all non-inventors are not included as inventors. Um, the uh, owner of the patent has 100% rights to that patent. You have the right to exclude us. You have the rights to enter licensing agreements with people. Um, each person listed as an inventor has that same right. Um, you can uh, work out an assignment agreement with amongst the inventors. So you can say, well, I get 50%, you, you get 50%, uh, I get the right to cover it here, they get the right to cover it there. Um, there's all sorts of different agreements that a lawyer can help you uh, work out. But anybody that is a named inventor, Hi. <laughs> Nice little musical animal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is that music patented? Probably don't have Public performance, maybe? Um, <laughs> Very useful. If, uh, if, if you've got somebody that uh, helped invent the, uh, the, the invention, they refuse to get their name put on the, uh, the, the patent application. There's procedures within the, uh, the patent office that you can cover that. Say, look, this guy helped invent it. He's, he is an inventor. He wants nothing to do with this, so you know, he didn't sign. That, that you, 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 you can cover that. And um, one, one, one thing that you want to be careful on is, like, let's say you've got 
got an idea for uh, you know improved pen or whatnot. Not sure how to make it yourself. You know, you've got the general idea. You've got the idea. Um, you know, if you just hire someone to you know actually physically build it for you, that wouldn't necessarily make them an inventor. However, if uh, when they're you know putting that together, they come, hey, you know, uh, if we uh, put a little springy here or, or uh, what's not there, now, it's like, hey, yeah, that improved it. And you include that in, in that application there. Now they're an inventor. You did 95% of the inventing. They just did the one little tiny piece. Um, you two are equal inventors. You're co-inventors on it. Um, you each have 100% rights to that. Um, so it's highly recommended that if you are having somebody doing work for you on something that you were thinking about getting a patent for, um, Try to get an assignment agreement with them. Entity, the uh, filing fees for a utility patent application are going to be about $600. Um, the filing fee for a provisional application is going to be, for a small entity, is going to be about $125. And then on top of that, if, if you're having an attorney or an agent help you, the fees, fees associated with that. Uh, would be on top of that. Yes, Larry? Uh, I'm just a little unclear on, I'm not entirely sure if you just haven't gotten to this yet, but are these renewable or is it 20 years and that's it? Um, we didn't get to it. No, it's 20 years and, and that's it. However, if you end up doing an advancement beyond what you had in that initial application, you can get a patent on that improvement. So something else could get a, a, a patent that would end up that could, that could end up going on further, but that, uh, that initial patent, assuming everything processes through the system on time, you're going to get basically 20 years from the, the date that it was filed. Yes? So you can get a patent on an improvement on a new patent, but can somebody else get a, a, a patent on the improvement? Or you pretty much said no, right? Yeah, somebody else. Yeah, sure. There's oh, all okay, the, 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 the the, 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 the key car remote controls out there. And okay. Actually, there's probably a whole series of patents that relate to, to that, but just for simplicity's okay. sake, you know, that, that, that one's out there, and then somebody else came along with, well, now we've got a keyless one. It's an improvement over, over the other. Okay. And because it's an improvement, whoever had that initial patent without, the, uh, without authorization from the, the keyless, patent holder, they wouldn't be able to make a keyless entry, even though they could end up reading the patent application, you know, re re reading the, 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 the issued patent, and know how to make and how to use this one. I think the same person files improvement, because they're from keyless, the same company. Um, they're, they're, they're yeah, pr 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 provided it's something separate from what that was, you get 20 years on top of that. If, if it's basically considered the same sort of thing, you're getting to a little bit of a greater area. But um, if, if it's determined that that's basically part of what the original one was, or too significantly like that, you could get a patent on the, the, the new subspecies. If, it, if it's just considered a small change with, 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 within the overall uh, grouping, then you could get a patent on that that particular one, but you'd end up having to uh, disclaim the, the end of the patent term, so you'd still have the original 20 years. Um, that gets a little gray, depends on what exactly the, the thing is. But a, a true improvement beyond what, what was there in, in the original, that would be able to get your, your 20 years on the, on the next. Yes. If you have a patent and it runs for 20 years and you make the mousetrap and then you improve that mousetrap so that you have the new one that you're making for another 20 years, can somebody come in and now make the old one? So as, as, as soon as that first patent expires, and it can either expire at the 20 years or we'll talk about later on maintenance fees where if you don't 
yeah. keep your thing active, you can abandon it and it might go go public sooner. But yeah, that 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 original one now that be, that enters the public domain after 20 years. But the nice thing is you've now got the better mouse trap that you've got a patent on. Other people are making your less advanced one, but you're you 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 you've got the new one, the better one. Yeah. No, it was actually a similar question. When you extend that to drug manufacturers, uh -huh. there seems to be a lot of, uh, I'm just thinking of like generic Lipitor, which you can now get. But Lipitor tried to do an improvement to keep you from being able to get the generic. What was that about and is that different? Okay. Um, the, 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 the drugs, I don't tend to get involved uh, too much in, in uh, pharmaceuticals, but my understanding is that a lot of times what they'll end up doing um, to kind of get the patent protection on the original drug is that um, they end up getting a patent on different metabolites or something that comes as a result of using that drug. Again, I'm, I'm not, that's, that's not my area of expertise. That's, <coughs> that, that's my understanding. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I had a question about um, the, uh, penalties for claiming um, patent pending or patent uh, when you don't when you don't have it. Here's, here's what I, I I came into a case where somebody filed a provisional and they were making something and they stamped it patent pending. They then went <coughs> did not make a real patent. So after a year, they didn't have that, but they were still selling the material. It said patent pending because of course they're manufacturing. Are there are there penalties for claiming uh, patent pending when you shouldn't? Um, there are actually, and actually that's uh, on, I've co covered on uh, one of my slides a little later on. If you don't mind, if I'll hold off on giving you the answer to that. Uh, what category does pharmaceuticals come under? Um, pharmaceutical would end up falling under uh, utility. Patent coverage. Um, typically, um, you know, if it's like an aloe type, it, it, I guess it, it could fall under a uh, plant as well. But typically, like the drugs themselves, they they, they, they would be considered under a utility patent. Yes, Mike. I just want to make a comment about pharmaceutical. What they usually do is to go to Congress, and they argue that they spend so much money developing that, so they have a special case to extend their patent. They've been doing that. Thank you. I got a question. What about patents for writing materials, software, and the like? Um, those um, so, so, software patents are a kind of unique beast. They do fall under utility. They tend to uh, be considered a, a business process, a business method, uh, quite often. And um, some software is patentable. It, 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 it depends on what exactly it is, and you have to make sure that you have it meeting um, in a proper way. Yes? Really quick, is the provisional patent uh, extendable? Can you read that? A provisional patent, that's an excellent question. A provisional patent is not extendable, but you can submit a, 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 a separate provision. Yeah. Um, the original one doesn't get reviewed. You know, you can put whatever you think is current of your uh, your invention at the time. Put that in a provisional application. You can uh, you can have multiple provisionals in at a time, and a uh, a non-provisional application can actually claim priority to, to multiple provisionals. So. If your first provisional expired, you know, you can you know, update what you had as a provisional and you can submit a submit a new one. And you could have that pending while while that provisional is is filed. Um, and patent pending is just a, 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 all it means uh, is that you have an application on file that is in process. It can be a a provisional application, it can be a utility application. Um, if you have a patent application on file with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, but do not have an issued patent yet, 
you can say that you are patent pending. Thank <laughs> you.